Now, questions have tonight emerged over what sources describe as a bloated security workforce and a strained payroll in Parliament. Insiders in Parliament say millions of shillings in taxpayer funds could be misappropriated through payment of allowances and even salaries to what they describe as ghost workers. Citizen TV's Brenda Wanga has been on an investigative assignment in Parliament buildings and now reports. Security is the most visible feature of Parliament buildings. This is one of the most secured government installations in the country. Gaining entry into the current complex requires one to go through many layers of security checks. Its manned security checkpoints, Parliament relies on layers of security personnel drawn from different security formations. Afternoon, remember, its debate was... The most visible are the officers from the Sergeant at Arms Office. They take care of both the physical and ceremonial security protocols around the Speaker, members, the clerk and other staff of the National Assembly. According to insiders, the security layering brings on board the regular police in uniform and plain clothes with retinues of personal bodyguards and even informal security aides completing the crowded security setup. Our sources will go by fictitious code names Charlie Bravo 1 and Charlie Bravo 2. We have, firstly, the sergeant at arms functions in both houses. So we have national, sergeant at arms, national assembly, sergeant at arms, senate. Breaking down, all they do is security work. There's nothing beyond security. In addition, we also have the in-house parliament security and safety team. It's a directorate. The other two are directors. There's a directorate in charge of that. Now, Parliament has then gone ahead and hired the National Police Security Formations as third-party service providers. This compounds the confusion in the sense that this was not informed by any scientific research, which in security circles is far to the, uh, say, the, the security analysis and uh, yeah. So what am I saying? We have the national, uh, the, the, the Kenya police, the station, the police station, the parliamentary police station. Mm. We have the GSU, a platoon of the GSU. We have the RDU. We have the administration police. We have the, the administration police team. Uh, yeah, administration police mm. and. Uh, in the division, there are two teams, the security of government installations. It's not scrapped, no. The AP has two services, the national police, the Kenya police, and the administration police. And the Kenya police deals with public security. The administration police deals with security of government installations and any other specialized. It was not scrapped. According to the insiders, these different security outfits at Parliament have been operating in an uncoordinated manner with no central command. In case of anything, God forbid. Control is a key principle of security, defense, and safety management. Now, what we have had and what we still have today is a structure that is linear. When you don't get it right at the foundational level, that means everything else will crumble. So having had a linear structure, then it becomes very difficult to now uh, demarcate or go down to the schemes and design who does what when, the job description. 
The situation is further compounded by what the two say is a lack of a proper hierarchy and schemes of service for the officers serving, especially under the Parliamentary Joint Services Unit. There is also the challenge of what they say is a top-heavy deployment even for duties that are essentially meant for the lower levels of security officers. Na mikakati ya kubandisha mwenye anayelala usiku ama mwenye anatoka mchana, hakuna. Wale wanafanya kasi mchana, wale wanafanya usiku, ni kama wao tundi wanajismamia. Kwa sababu kirudi nyuma hapo kwa hiyo uh, ishu tumeongea ya scheme of service. Hakuna kasi yangu, hakuna kasi ya mkubwa, hakuna kasi ya mdogo. Sote tunafanya kazi. Our sources say this and what they term as a bloated security force means that nearly half the number of officers on the roll either do very little of what they are meant to do or are simply ghost workers. You see, as a security profile, like I said, we are trained to be lean, effective teams. So in a, the opposite is an ineffective team, whereby half the team does not work completely because they believe the other half will do it. This by standard attitude, actually, that's the best example. That if I don't do it, someone else will do it. So eventually no one ends up doing it. But worse off, the other half that is doing it will then also get uh, depressed in a manner that, yes, I've been working so hard, but the beneficiary is... Is, uh, they actually, there's actually no motivation because of the bystander attitude. Yeah. So eventually no one ends up doing the job. Our sources admit that they fall under the ghost workers category. Oftentimes they do not show up for duty and no one notices their absence, but they still get paid. The presence of deceased officers, those who have been transferred out but are still on the payroll, also raised questions on the sanctity of the security payroll in Parliament. Indeed, one such incident is evidenced by communication from the DCI instructing the chief security and safety officer of the PSC to remove a deceased corporal who had been seconded to PSC from their records. The letter to this effect was sent in September 2022. The officer had been deceased in 2020, meaning for a period of two years, allowances were paid out to the deceased corporal's name. This isn't the only irregularity in the payroll for allowances paid out to security for Parliament. Any, uh, if you generate any list of uh, security teams, irrespective of KDF, you, it must be broken down into PF number, rank and name. Mm. The, the payroll for police allowances in Parliament does not have a column for rank, which is an outright breach. Secondly, the PF number is cluttered in the sense that some beneficiaries have uh, service numbers, mm. whereas others are designated by the IFMIS numbers. With that kind of arrangement, you cannot rule out the presence of ghost workers. Because why else would you then opt or elect to use... Uh, if these numbers when they have PF numbers. This payroll costs the taxpayer 30.7 million shillings per month in allowances paid for amongst other things, administration police, top-up allowances, overtime, rapid deployment, speaker security, CID, GSU allowances, and doc section allowances. And even in this K-9 unit, the whistleblowers allege irregularities exist. Parliament has a, a, a contingent of... Uh, dogs and handlers mm. on the payroll we have a list of 15 and yet on a daily basis we barely have more than five dogs so where are the, the other numbers deployed clearly that needs an explanation but from a casual observer mm. the rest of the dogs and handlers are ghosts because mm. they never report to parliament the whistleblowers contend that unless these issues are resolved, even as parliamentarians seek to move to their new offices, the challenge of security then will persist. We reached out to the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Clerk of the National Assembly, and the Director of the Parliamentary Joint Services for comment on this issue. Our efforts were not successful. Brenda Wanga, Citizen TV.